Picking a property manager for your rental property can be pretty intimidating, especially if you've never done it before. In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the key factors that I look at when I'm picking a property manager for my own portfolio. Before that, just wanted to thank you for stopping by the channel. My name is Jack Duffley and I'm a real estate investor with three properties right now, including one out of state, and two of those properties have managers. And the third one is the one I'm filming from right now, but this will become a rental at some point as well and we'll turn it over to management. I also worked in property management as a career for a couple of years before I became an attorney, so I have that perspective as well. Now, the first and probably most important factor when it comes to having a good or a bad manager is how responsive they are. So you wanna know how responsive this manager is before you hire them. If a property manager doesn't respond to tenants in a timely fashion, and doesn't actually take care of their needs, then that's obviously a problem because that's what you're hiring a manager to do. And on the flip side, if you're the landlord, if you actually are the one who owns the property, who is hiring this manager, you want them to be responsive to you as well. So it goes both ways. Now it can be a little bit tricky to figure out how responsive a manager is before you actually hire them. So one thing you can always do is check out reviews online. This is kind of your first step, seeing if there's any feedback out there that's particularly negative or particularly positive. Try to find some sort of theme, See if there are a lot of complaints about responsiveness or even other issues. There's plenty of things to look for in these sorts of reviews. But basically take a quick look for red flags in those reviews and also ask your real estate agent that you might be working with or other professionals that might be familiar with this property management company to see what they have to say. But one quick strategy that I always like to do is calling that property manager's office number or whatever number the tenant would be calling in the event they needed something. So I call that using that tenant line to see if I'll get a response quickly. If they don't pick up the phone during reasonable hours, that's a red flag, but it's not a deal breaker. But if they don't respond or get back to me within a reasonable period of time, at least a day, then that is a very big red flag. Because what if a tenant had an emergency? Was that person not gonna respond? Were they not even going to acknowledge my call? When are they actually gonna call back? Again, doing this during normal business hours. But if the property management team isn't gonna be responsive to you, why on earth would they be responsive to your tenants? A quick check like that can be a very easy step in your sort of due diligence process in picking a manager. But another thing I like to look for with property managers is something like in-house maintenance. That is, they have a staff that can take care of issues with properties, and that might even include doing some very light rehab work or really just more handyman type activities, not something that would require a full crew, just something where the tenant might have an issue. Maybe something breaks, maybe a glass shower door breaks. Having someone who can go in and install that very quickly without having to reach out to third parties can make it not only quicker, but also a lot cheaper. During my own career in property management, I worked on a couple of properties that had in-house maintenance and it made things so much easier, both from a management perspective, and it also made residents a lot happier since they could get issues taken care of quickly. Makes sense, you have the extra help on hand. You don't have to call for availability for some third party. You have people right there who can hop on issues quickly and take care of them, and they're familiar with the property if they've been working there for a while. Now, a manager doesn't have to have in-house maintenance. Sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense, especially if the company isn't very big. You kind of need some scale for that to really make sense. So even if it's a small management company, or maybe they just don't have in-house maintenance for whatever reason, as long as they are well connected and have a list of contractors that they work with to take care of smaller or bigger issues, that's definitely a great thing to look for. And if they do have a preferred list of contractors, often those prices are gonna be better than if you were trying to find the contractor yourself because maybe they've cut some sort of deal to where they're bringing enough volume to that contractor that it ends up being cheaper in the long run anyways. So it's not totally necessary to have in-house maintenance, but I do think it's really nice to have and I'm definitely willing to pay up a bit for it. Even if my management fee every month is a little bit higher, just having that sort of convenience and flexibility and having some in-house maintenance staff there, I think it's really valuable. Speaking of fees, another thing to look for with property managers is a clear fee structure. Since things can get kind of complicated or otherwise are very vague in what's actually being charged and what's actually covered by the management agreement. Because when you're hiring a property manager, a third party manager that is, you're hiring them to do some sort of role. And that role is defined in your management agreement. Sometimes that's much more expensive than other agreements. Maybe they're covering leasing, maybe they're not. So you wanna make sure you know what you're actually paying for because not every management company will do the same things. And the fee that you're paying won't necessarily go to whatever thing you think it is. Because sometimes management companies will have a flat fee that covers almost everything, and others will have maybe a low sort of flat monthly fee, but then they end up having a bunch of other charges elsewhere. So you definitely wanna ask for some sort of schedule showing all the fees and what you're actually paying for and 
if something happens, if the unit gets turned, if you want to put a new tenant in there, if the tenant renews, what are the fees there? Sometimes a management company will charge a full month's rent just for renewing a tenant that's already there. And that's going to get pretty expensive because that's a tenant that's staying there. So you wouldn't expect that to cost a lot for the management company. So you just want to figure out where all the fees are going. What are you actually paying for? And seeing if that sort of teaser rates that maybe low fixed percentage isn't really all that great because you have all these fees elsewhere. So do take a close look at the management agreement, see where all the fees are and make sure you know what you're actually getting from your manager because don't expect them to do anything that isn't outlined in that agreement that you are not paying for. And another thing to look for that kind of goes without saying, but that's making sure you're dealing with someone who's professional because they're ultimately dealing with people who are gonna be very upset. If your tenant has an issue, they're gonna to go to the manager, probably not in the best mood because it's something happening with their home, they want it fixed, it makes sense. So the property manager is gonna to have to sort of take the brunt of that. And that's why you're hiring them after all. They're dealing with these issues as they come. And that is the whole role of being a property manager. You're fixing issues, you're putting out fires literally or figuratively, and you're taking care of the issues as they come. But that can get very stressful and it can get pretty exhausting too. So you wanna make sure you're hiring a professional property manager, someone who knows how to carry themselves, who knows how to deal with these things, who has a good temperament. And that can be kind of hard to judge off the bat, but do keep an eye out for it because if you're hiring someone who maybe doesn't follow up, maybe someone who doesn't take things very seriously, you definitely don't wanna ignore that. And that can be a big factor for determining whether someone's actually a good manager. They're sort of overall professionalism. That's where experience can definitely help if someone's been working in property management for years. It's probably a pretty good sign that they know what they're doing, though it's not guaranteed. You gotta do your other due diligence as well. Take a look at those reviews and all the great things like that. But Typically experience is gonna help here. They've dealt with problems in the past. They know how to handle these things. And if they've been at the same company for a while, maybe they have great relationships with the other people at the company, with maintenance staff, with the contractors that they might work with on a regular basis, all those things. Just take a look for experience, professionalism, all those sort of soft characteristics that are very important. And once you find a good manager and you're setting up your relationship with them, definitely make sure you set those expectations where you think they should be set. When is the property manager supposed to call you for approval? Do they have a green light to take care of small issues or even big issues? How much active involvement are you gonna have? How much approval do you need to give? You wanna make sure this is all set out at the beginning. Oftentimes this is gonna be in the management agreement, but sometimes it's not. So you're gonna to wanna to clarify that with whoever you're hiring as your manager. You wanna take care of all those issues at the front end rather than trying to do it on the fly and then it gets very awkward and you're getting off on the wrong foot. But above all, if you put some time in into finding a manager who's gonna take care of your properties well, who you're excited to work with, that's gonna go a long way towards making your real estate business that much better and more enjoyable to actually own. Real estate comes with many headaches and hiring a property manager is just one way to deal with many of those headaches, though it won't eliminate all of them and it might create some new ones. So keep that in mind when you're going into real estate in general. A property manager isn't gonna take care of everything, but they can go a pretty long way towards making your life a lot easier if you find a good one up front. As of now, I've hired two property managers, one for my property in Chicago and another for my house in Indianapolis. And these are two separate management companies, so it's totally different managers. And so far, it's been great. I only spend maybe a few minutes every single week on the properties. And that's because I took the time up front to try and look for a good property manager. And so far, things have been great. And it gives me confidence that when I buy new properties, I'll be able to scale a lot more easily because I have good property management systems in place, or I should say my manager does, and I can just sort of plug more properties into the system and continue to scale. Now, this video was more about hiring third-party property managers. You can always hire one in-house, in which case many of these same factors would apply. You'd want someone who's professional, who has good temperament, and can deal with all these issues, and ideally has some experience. But you're gonna have to have a pretty big portfolio to justify having an in-house manager that only works on your properties and works on no one else's. But ideally, this video can be a helpful start for someone looking for a third-party property manager as you build out that portfolio. So with that said, if you like this video, definitely like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. It would go a long way towards helping the channel. But until next time, take care.